You're listening to the Confidence Coach Podcast, episode 89. My root canal story and sitting with the discomfort. All right, guys, before we dive in today, I want to remind you that enrollment is open for Confidence Academy 2.0 from now until the end of June. So we are looking for women who are ready to not only increase their confidence in their life, but in their business. Women who are ready to step out of their comfort zone and into endless possibilities. You guys, I am stoked for this next round. Okay, what's included? Monthly coaching calls, your online confidence course, monthly expert guest trainings, high level accountability. You get an exclusive community, non judgmental support, retreats, and so much more. If you are interested, please head over to sashadavis.com slash apply now or scroll down, click the link in the show notes and send in your application. I can't wait to read it. All right, let's dive in. Oh, well, you guys are going to get a kick out of this episode. (laughs) I'm going to share my root canal story in all of the aha moments along the way, just to give you some insight on how my brain operates. So it was a Monday and I woke up and my face was kind of hot and swollen. It wasn't like terribly swollen. Like I could tell it was swollen, but I don't know if anybody else could necessarily tell. And it was my lower left jawline. And I had thought, oh man, you know, pregnancy, maybe I just aggressively brushed my teeth or maybe I upset my gums or maybe I did something and I didn't really think a whole lot about it. I, you know, looked in the mirror and I seen that there was a little bit of inflammation again, you know, like on the inside of my mouth on the lower left hand corner um, under, under like my molars, I guess is what you call them. (laughs) And I'm like, okay, no big deal, no big deal. You know, and being pregnant, you can't really take a whole lot. Not that I'm a big person on taking a whole lot of medications, but I was in some discomfort. I'm like, okay, okay, I'll put some ice on it and I'll take some Tylenol and call today. And didn't really think a whole lot more about it. The pain continued to grow throughout the day, but you know, being a strong, stubborn woman, I kept telling myself, oh, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. It'll, it'll go away in a few days. I don't need to, I don't need to go to the dentist. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. Is what I kept telling myself. So interesting to look back and be like, oh yeah, clearly nothing was fine, but I was ignoring it. And so I go to bed and I wake up Tuesday, Tuesday, holy smokes, a lot more pain. And Tuesdays, Mondays and Tuesdays are really, really busy days for me. Like Monday nights, I or Mondays, I work all day. And then Monday evenings, I teach therapeutic horseback riding. And so I, I work for myself um, and for another online company during the day. And then in the evening, I work for a nonprofit teaching um, people with disabilities how to ride horses and how to incorporate those movements to build not only their confidence, but their, their overall muscular strength, their physical strength by riding horses, by teaching them horsemanship skills. And so I had class that night and my freaking tooth was like throbbing, you guys. I'm like seven months pregnant. So it's hard to maneuver people on horses because I have to mount them and dismount them. So having this belly is difficult um, in itself. But then on top of it, you know, I have like this throbbing tooth pain. And if you guys have ever had tooth pain before, it's like that dull throbbing sensation where it's not really like a debilitating pain, but it's, it's there and you can feel it. And you basically have a heartbeat in your face. So I'm like trying to teach. I'm out of breath because I'm running out of room in my body to breathe. (laughs) For some reason, my babies sit really high and so it is so hard for me to breathe. It's like the the space that runs out first is my lungs. And I'm like, <gasps> I just 
constantly sound like I'm running a flight of stairs, which is not the case. (laughs) So I wake up Tuesday and it is even, I'm in even more pain. I'm like, oh my God, you gotta be kidding me. And I have a full day. Again, like Monday, Tuesdays are just very heavy days for me. That's kind of how I set up my schedule. I'm a, like, I'm a, if I'm going to work today, I'm just going to work the whole day kind of person. So like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday are very full days for me. And then Thursday, Friday, Saturday are very chill, like very minimal work days for me. And then Sundays are like planning and rest days. Um, I rest, you know, every day a little bit, but Sunday is really like a really rest day, um, and a planning day. So Tuesday, full day, And I'm like, oh my God, this is going to suck balls. My face is throbbing. What am I going to do? And so I'm, you know, doing the ice packs. I'm doing the Tylenol and I'm just trying to like bear through the day. Like, oh, okay. Everything's fine. Everything's fine. And it gets to about three o'clock in the afternoon. And it's to the point where like my whole face hurts. I'm like, okay, I'm going to have to call the freaking dentist. So I call the dentist and at first, I don't know. I have, uh, this is like the rebel in me. I hate redoing my schedule for other people's schedules, but this is just something that I have to get over because not everybody runs on Sasha time. And so when I first called, they only had something available at 9 a.m. And I was like man, I would have to cancel this person, this person, and this person in order to make this appointment. And I, I, I hate canceling. Like there's something deep within me that I absolutely hate not showing up for others. I feel like in my personal life, I've had a lot of people quit on me. A lot of people cancel on me. A lot of people not follow through with the things that they said they were going to do. And so I pride myself in being very loyal. And if I say I'm going to do something, I'm going to fucking do it. I'm going to do it no matter what. (laughs) And so in order for me to make this 9am appointment, I had to cancel a few other things. And at first I was like, nope, not doing it. You're going to, that dentist is going to have to figure something else out. (laughs) This is literally what I said to these people. And I was like, I'll have to call you back. And I was being a real jerk about it. And because I was in pain, you guys, like if you ever like, if you have that throbbing tooth pain, like it's hard not to be an asshole. Like you're just in pain and you just want relief. And so I hang up and I'm like, oh God, I wish that blah, blah, blah. And I'm like sitting here having a pity party. And I'm like, oh my God, Sasha, first world problems, like get a grip. And so I totally right then and there in my truck, um, cause I was driving around, I was running errands that day too. So I was on the phone. I had multiple appointments, um, phone appointments, in-person appointments, things like that. And I was in my truck and I like was so angry at this like receptionist person that the dentist wouldn't accommodate me. <laughs> and it's just funny to even like say it now. Cause I'm like, wow, okay, let's have the whole office change their schedule because you don't want to change yours and you're the one with the problem. So I sat there and I'm like, how can I, how can I, how can I? And I thought, wow, you're being a real dick how you like your your face is in pain and if you're not taking care of yourself you sure as shit aren't going to be in any condition to take care of these other people that you have appointments for tomorrow so why not reschedule those people for when you're feeling your optimal best you can you know the dentist is more than willing to accommodate you tomorrow morning at 9 a.m get you in within less than 24 hours which is freaking unheard of i mean i've Every time I've had to go to the dentist, I've had to wait like two or three days and it's been like excruciating pain. And so I'm like, oh my gosh, okay, just like be grateful that they're even able to get me in in such a short amount of time and that within 24 hours, I'm going to have some form of relief. So I kind of check myself. I do like a quick meditation, quick like mindset shift. And I'm just really like sitting with myself like, okay, how can I be grateful in this moment? How can I be loving in this moment? How can I show appreciation How can I switch this? Because if I'm coming at this receptionist like a dick, like she is not going to want to help me, right? Like think about when people call in and try to talk to you and they're just total jerks. You know, you are a total jerk back. You're in that defense mode because you're like, oh, hell no, you're not going to call me and tell me what's up, right? And I would do the same thing. So I was like, okay, Sasha, 
put your guard down, stop me at a jerk, call these people and just say, yes, you'll take the appointment. Thank you so much. And I did, I called back and I, you know, I apologized. Um, I actually asked for the receptionist that I talked to the first time because it was a different gal that answered. And I said, Hey, can I talk to so-and-so? And And she's like, yeah, one second. And so she transferred me and I said, Hey, this is Sasha. I'm calling back. I wanted to apologize for being so short with you. I'm just in a lot of pain and you know, I would be, I would love to take that 9am appointment if it's available. Um, again, you know, like I appreciate you. I appreciate the dentist. I'm so grateful that you guys are able to get me in and accommodate me on such a short notice. And so she was like, instantly she was nicer too. She's like, Oh my gosh, no problems. I totally understand. And she was really short with me the first time, but I'm sure it's because I was being a jerk. You know, I'm sitting here like, what do you mean? Only 9am, you know, being like a angry turd about it. And so hang on one second. All right. I had to get Oakland a snack quick. (laughs) Part of working at home with your kids is sometimes they need you. Right. But I have the luxury of being able just to stop and go over and be like, Hey, let's get a snack and let's keep doing what we're doing kind of thing and be able to, you know, keep an eye on her and do some things for myself at the same time. So pretty cool. Um, anyways, so they get me into the appointment and I'm like, okay, sweet. And I call my husband and he's like, thank God, because he was, you know, he's always like, Sasha, quit trying to be a tough guy. Quit trying to be a tough guy. And I'm always like, I am not going to the dentist. I am not going to the doctor. Like I don't, you know, and asking for help has been, a continuous journey for me. Every, every time something comes up and I have to ask for help, I have to check myself because I am so freaking stubborn. And it's almost like I punish myself by having to, I I tell myself, you have to figure this out. You have to suffer through this. And I don't know why I'm programmed like that. Well, I kind of do, but that's neither here nor there. We're talking about my root canal right now, not my childhood problems. (laughs) And so he's, you know, like, oh, thank God, you know, because you're pregnant. Like, what if you have an infection in your mouth? Like, it could affect this and it could affect that. And I'm like, yeah, yeah, I know, I know. And I mean, I know this deep down, but I'm just really, really stubborn. And so then, you know, I get home and Tuesday night is like my coaching night. So I have like back to back calls basically until 9 p.m., 8 p.m., 9 p.m. Like I take a break in there um, in between calls. Like I'm not like call after call after call. Like I take breaks in there for myself and then, um, you know, do dinner and stuff like that. But basically I'm on the phone all Tuesday or I'm doing appointments all Tuesday. And so I'm like taking Tylenol, you know, as needed or every six hours or whatever the bottle says, and then um, doing ice packs. And so I slept like absolute shit Monday night and absolute shit Tuesday night. So between getting up every like freaking hour or two to pee because that's what happens when you're pregnant. And then on top of that, my mouth is throbbing. I slept like shit, you guys. And so I get up Wednesday morning and I'm like, oh my God, I can't wait for this freaking appointment. Hopefully they can like figure out what's wrong with my face. And so I ended up having to call my daycare, which Oakland only goes to a friend of mine's daycare like one day a week. She used to be in full-time daycare, but she's not anymore. I do like an as needed daycare now so that she can spend more time with me at home. And so I called her and I said, hey, is there any way that, or no, I messaged her Tuesday and I'm like, hey, could you watch Oakland another night this week? And she's like, no problem. Bring her over. I can watch her. I'm like, okay, great. It should only be, (laughs) I thought it was only going to be like an hour or two. I'm like, oh, they'll do a quick checkup. They'll be like, everything's fine. No big deal here. Take some antibiotics or something like that. I don't know. So I drop her off and I head over to the dentist and I get there, I don't know, like 8.45, 8.50. My appointment was at 9, which, you guys, I was early for an appointment. I just want to make note of that because I <laughs> have always ran on, quote, Sasha time, which means that I either show up right on time or 10 minutes late or 30 minutes late or whenever the fuck I want. So, And I'm trying to be a lot more respectful of other people's time. You know, they're able to accommodate me. I need to show up. I need to be respectful. And I was on time. I was early. I was like, woohoo, I am winning at life. (laughs) My face is throbbing and I'm like, get me the fuck into this dentist now. And so I get in there and they're doing an exam and they're checking me all out. And he says, well, 
your nerve is dead and it looks like you have to have a root canal. You're also due for a cleaning and we got to do this, 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 and this. And I was like, you got to be kidding me. I'm like thinking, okay, so when do we schedule that appointment? And uh, turns out they could do everything same day. (laughs) I was like, oh my God. Okay, so again, um, it went from, you know, being like an hour long thing to ended up being like a four hour thing. And I had, you know, appointments and like things scheduled throughout the day, you know, like meetings with clients, meetings with other people, podcast meetings, just a bunch of things planned through the day. And I was like, oh my God, again, went into that, like, I have to rearrange my whole day, you know, and, and and at the beginning I was like, for you guys. And it's like, wait a minute. No, they're rearranging their schedule to get me in right here, right now, because I have a massive infection in my face. I'm seven months pregnant and I need to have this taken care of now. So It was like this whole another mindset shift while I'm sitting there in the freaking dentist chair. And so I finally get everything rescheduled. I, you know, called some appointments and I'm like, hey, I'm really sorry. I have to reschedule because I'm having a root canal. (laughs) Oh, man. And so in my head, I'm like, oh, they just think this is an excuse for I don't want why they don't want to talk to me or why I don't want to talk to them. And and it's a legit reason. But in my head, I'm thinking that they probably think I'm lying about this. And it's that it's that loyalty thing coming up. You know, I hate bailing on people. I hate canceling things. Like it gives me extreme anxiety. Like I'm talking like sweating, shaking, like these people think I'm a terrible person. What kind of person am I? You said you'd never cancel. Oh, I like spiral down a rabbit hole very, very quickly. And so I have to check myself. It's like, no, Sasha, like you are legit getting worked on. Like this is not your fault. This is out of your control. Focus on what you can control. You know, you're not the only person that this is affecting. Like if you have a massive infection in your face, like you're also growing a human, this can compromise like your whole immune system, right? And there's more than one person depending on my immune system right now. So I'm like, okay get it together. What's important here? You are important here. Your body is important. Taking care of yourself is important. It has to come first or you can't help take care of others. So I'm having this mental battle in my head and obviously the dentist and the assistant don't know this, but I probably look like I'm just losing my mind because I'm like, I have to call people and I'm texting people and I'm like, I'm so sorry. And so then I like text my friend at the daycare and I'm like, oh my gosh, I apologize. But is there any way that you can watch her till like one o'clock? Like I'm not going to get out of here. They're going to do everything right here, right now. And, you know, I call my husband and I'm like, okay, this is what's happening. I'm not going to have my phone. Like if something happens, like get a hold of Will and things like that. And uh, so, yeah, then they started numbing me up and away we go. And I went in thinking, you know, half hour, hour appointment, you know, maybe look at it, say nothing's really that wrong. You're just going to, you know, it'll go away in a few days. Nope. Nope. They had to fix like a Um, well, basically what they had to do, well, if you've ever had a root canal and I've already had work on that too. So it's like a crown. And so, oh my gosh, it's just been awful. That whole side of my mouth for some reason, I don't know if it's bad genetics or if like I just didn't take care of my teeth when I was younger. I'm not really sure, but I have really bad teeth on that side. And so they had to go in and just do a whole bunch of work. And so I thought I was going to be there for a half hour. Um, no, I was there for over four hours. So talk about sitting with all kinds of discomfort, emotional discomfort, physical discomfort, mental discomfort. I mean, like I was put through hell basically, at least that's what it felt like to me. You know, again, I have to, you know, relate everything to, well, not relate everything, but recognize first world problems, right? Like there's actually people out there who don't have access to dentist or who don't have insurance or who don't have like the ability to just like go pay for these kinds of things. And so I'm like, okay, nope, nope. Be grateful, be grateful. But it was very uncomfortable, you guys. Very, very uncomfortable. And so literally sat there with my mouth open for four fucking hours, four hours. If you've ever had a root canal, they put like this, they call it a dam and it's like this big rubber thing with like a, uh, a thing around your tooth so that they can just like zone in on the one tooth. 
because they don't want anything to like fall into like the the roots or whatever because they're literally like replacing like they're taking that stuff out and um and while they were in there this sounds gross but they were like trying to suck out as much of the infection as they could because my face at this point looked like I had a golf ball hanging off the side of my cheek like and I'm like it's fine it's fine um no Sasha you have a golf ball growing out of the side of your face because you're too stubborn to go get it looked at so that's me guys (laughs) if you can relate and so I'm sitting there for four hours mouth wide open my jaw is so tired And half of my face is numb. Like they had to go in and do a couple different numbing things. And so literally the whole left side of my face was numb from like right underneath my left eyeball all the way down to um, probably like the lower part of my jaw into my neck and then all the way back to like my ear. And so while I can't feel anything like physical discomfort, I can, or well, I guess physical pain, I can still feel like the discomfort of holding my mouth open. And I'm like, Oh my God, this is exhausting. Like, this is crazy. And I'm trying to relax. I'm trying to like meditate. And I forgot my freaking headphones. Cause I was like, Oh, I'll just listen to an audiobook. Well, nope. I forgot my freaking headphones in the car and we were already in the process. So I couldn't be like, Hey, can I run out to my car quick and grab my headphones so I can finish up my audiobook?" No, I just had to sit there with my mouth open for four hours while they did all this work. And it ended up taking longer than they thought because of the infection. It was so large and they were trying to get all the stuff out. And, um, And then afterwards, you know, they, they clean it all up, they put it all together. And I'm like, wow, talk about sitting with discomfort. Like there's no way around this. Like I had to go through it to get to the, the clarity on the other side. Right. If, and this in my head just kept saying to me, like I kept saying to myself, what we resist will persist and grow bigger. How fitting, how fitting. So where at in your life are you resisting things and resisting things and the problem just keeps getting bigger and bigger and bigger because you just keep avoiding it. This, this was me, right? So while this was only like a few day thing, this was my life before. Like I would just resist things. And then before you know it, I'm like, wow, this is like totally out of control. Like I can't keep brushing this under the rug. Like there's a real problem here. And this was just a glimpse, right? But I have the tools and resources and the strategy and the skills now to, to change these things at the time that I'm experiencing them versus waiting and waiting and waiting and waiting until the problem gets really, really, really big to the point where you can't fix it. So what we resist will persist and grow bigger. So I was resisting the acknowledging that I had tooth pain. I mean, just going back in like my my life, I was resisting a lot of things. I was resisting having conversations. I was resisting relationships. I was resisting money. I was resisting working for myself. I was resisting lots of things. Okay. And so I'm saying you have to go through the pain and discomfort to get to the other side. So like today, as I'm sitting here talking to you, zero pain, zero discomfort. Looking back, I'm like, oh, that wasn't so bad. I should have probably went to the dentist on Monday and had this taken care of even sooner. But I had to be stubborn, right? And so I was putting it off, not asking for help because I'm a tough guy and I can get through this and I can figure this out. Okay, great, but I can't perform my own dental procedures. So clearly I need help (laughs) because I'm not a fucking dentist, right? So this is where like coaches or therapists or counselors or dentists or doctors or whatever it is that you need in your life, this is where you ask for help. What problem are you resisting? How can you ask for help so that the problem stops snowballing? It stops growing. You guys have to look at this shit in order to figure it out. You can't just sweep it under the rug and hope that, okay, if I avoid this long enough, It'll just go away because that's not a thing. That is not a thing. And so anyways, I, you know, I'm getting all checked out and I'm setting up my next appointments to, you know, because I'm pretty religious about going to the dentist every six months. Like I am one of those people I've had a lot of dental problems. And so, and even like the gynecologist, like I am very routine. Like I get my lady bits checked out every single year. Every single year since I've had a period, since I was 12 years old, guys, I have had my lady parts checked out yearly, boobs and all. I am not about to mess around with that kind of stuff, right? 
And same with the dentist. I've gone every six months. Well, maybe there's been a couple of times that I've missed, but I've been very routine about going to the dentist too. But when I'm in pain or when something's wrong, that's when I ignore things. But like maintenance wise, I'm really good at maintenance. I'm really good at like, you know, my, my regular scheduled massages or, um, coaching calls or, you know, whatever it is that it looks like I'm very routine about my life. But when there's a problem, when there's like a problem that I need help, I'm like, Ugh! no, no problems. You're perfect. Don't let anybody know that you're human. <laughs> so I'm checking out and I ask them, you know, like, Hey, what do I take? What do I do? And they're like, Oh, well, we think we got out, you know, most of the infection. You should be fine. You shouldn't need antibiotics and we can't give you any pain pills. Cause the last time that I had a root canal, which I've had a couple of them, you guys, it's, it's fucking awful. Um, well, they're not too bad, I guess. It just depends. Um, But the last time they gave me pain meds, like the good shit pain meds, right? And that's a bad thing in itself because I have an addictive personality. So I'm like, I'm going to get all the refills and oh, so stupid. Looking back, I was so stupid. And so I can't take any of that stuff. Obviously, you know, you just kind of stick to Tylenol and I'm like, okay, well, I'll go without the antibiotics. Like I'm, I'm good, whatever. And, uh, and my whole face is numb. So I'm feeling good. I'm feeling good now. You guys I'm like, everything's fixed. We're good. And so I canceled all my appointments the rest of the day and, or rescheduled everything the rest of the day and just kind of hung out with Oakland and we just kind of took it easy. And then Thursday rolls around and the pain starts up again. And I'm like, what is happening? And so I keep telling myself, okay, it'll be okay. It'll be okay. It'll be okay. It was not okay. Friday morning, I went on the hunt again to figure out what the heck was going on with me. Turns out the infection had spread and I did need antibiotics. And so I was really kind of bummed about it. Um, But I ended up having to call my OB to have her prescribe antibiotics because with being pregnant, like there's a lot of people that are like, oh, I don't want to prescribe the wrong thing, blah, 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 blah. So I was on the phone like all Friday freaking morning trying to figure out how I can get seen so that I can get some pain relief, right? And while the swelling had gone down, it went from kind of like a golf ball size to maybe like a a ping pong ball or a little bit less. So it was a it was quite a bit less swollen the next day, but the pain was like still there and it was like spreading in like my jawline. And so anyways, I ended up getting antibiotics, taking them And I just, I, I really dislike taking medications. I really do. So like, I have a very hard time with, you know, they're like, oh, you have to take four pills four or, you know, four pills every four or one pill every four hours. Or I don't even remember what it is. I have to look at the bottle. I have timers in my phone to remind me when to take pills because I would, I would never remember to continue to take them. So I have these little alarms that go off that say, take meds, take meds. (laughs) And so I'm on these antibiotics until... Oh gosh, I think it's like 10 or 14 days. Again, I just, I'm going to take them until they run out, I guess. But I was like, man, I really don't want to take pills. I really don't want to take pills. I really don't want to take pills. And it's like, well, you have a massive infection in your face. Your body's clearly not able to fight off this infection because of all the things that have happened. So you just need to suck it up and you just need to do it. Again, like there's more than just you involved. And so I have to have these mental conversations with myself. I have these mental battles with myself all freaking day long on like what I should do versus what I want to do versus what I need to do. And a lot of times I just got to check my ego. It's like, shut up. Your ego's not in control. Your pride doesn't control everything. Like what is actually the best, safest option right here for everybody? Because if you're not taking care of yourself, your body's not going to be able to take care of the growing baby. You're not going to be able to take care of your two-year-old daughter. You're not going to be able to be a mom, a wife, a business. Like I'm not going to be able to show up as my best self if I'm not checking that ego, right? Like it's more than just me. So I have to take care of myself. I almost have to like have an out of body experience, right? So like if this was my daughter going through this, you bet your sweet ass as soon as she had an ounce of pain, I'm like, we're going to the doctor. We're getting this fixed. We're doing this. We're doing that, you know? But if it's me, I'm like, nope, 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 nope. So I have to almost treat myself like I would another person or how I would treat my kids. But I have to have that like out of body experience where I like, remove the self, remove the ego from the situation in order to actually deal with the problem. It's 
really kind of an ass backwards way of thinking of things, but that's how my brain works because I've been conditioned to give, 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 and I always put myself last. So I have to like almost speak of myself as a third person. Like I speak, you know, I'm always like, oh, Sasha this, oh, Sasha that, um, just to get my brain to wrap around like, okay, you have to take care of yourself in order to take care of others. Because if there is no you, obviously you can't take care of people. So get your shit together. So that's kind of like the the moral of my story. That's my whole root canal. <laughs> I ended up getting the antibiotics, started taking them right away. Um, on that Friday. And, you know, I feel a heck of a lot better now. The The swelling has, con, you know, consistently gone down, gone down, gone down to where I don't feel any swelling in my face now. And then I had a, a meetup on Saturday with some of the women who are in my uh, group program uh, that are local to me. And I love, love, love doing these meetups. And so we had breakfast at a restaurant in town. Um, that's kind of local to me. It's, I don't know, it's probably about a 45 minute drive for me, but that's okay. We had a breakfast that morning and that was like the first real meal that I was able to eat all week, all week. And I'm usually pretty good about being nutritious and like portion control and things like that because I'm I'm a sugar junkie like I could eat sugar all day long but I know the the damaging effects that sugar has on your body so I've been trying to really limit my sugar in the past few years and how often I eat candy and shit like that and how often I indulge but man I was like it was an inner battle with myself because I'm like, oh, should I just get coffee? Should I just get like a bagel? Should I just get like eggs? Like what should I get? And then I was like, you know what? Fuck it. (laughs) I'm going to get the big breakfast again. Because the last time I was there, I got the big breakfast and I indulged with the last person that I met up there. And I'm like, you know what? Screw it. Stack of pancakes, eggs, bacon, hash browns, orange juice, coffee. I want all the things. Like I am splurging this morning. But then I had to like check myself again, you guys, because I'm like, God, is everybody going to judge me for how much am I eating? Like, is everybody going to judge me for what I'm eating right now? Like because of the, you know, and like I like the syrup and stuff like that. Like there's just so much sugar and calories and all of that stuff. And I'm like, man, are people looking at me? Are they judging me? Like, what are they thinking? And then afterwards, I'm like, God, am I a piece of shit? Because like I indulge so much. And so I always have to have these conversations saying like, nope, it's okay, it's okay, it's okay. As long as you don't do this all day, every day, like one indulgence a week is no big deal. Like I planned for this, you know, you had a really big breakfast, so you're not even going to have a lunch because you're going to be so full and then you can just start back over and have a nutritious dinner. And so I'm having these inner conversations, this inner dialogue Nobody knows it, right? We're just having a good old time sitting at the table. We are laughing. We're crying. We're just, oh man, we're just having a good time. But at the same time, as I'm sitting here like shoveling my face, I'm like, oh, they're probably judging me right now because I'm shoving my face full of food. And then at the same time, I'm like, fuck it. I don't care. (laughs) And so it's all just very interesting to see how your brain works like that and how many thoughts actually go through your brain in such a short amount of time. But if we're not conscious of those thoughts, if we're not aware of those thoughts, if we don't know how to direct and channel those thoughts, we can easily let those thoughts consume us. And this is where you go into that negative spiral where all of a sudden you leave and you're like, oh man, I feel like crap. I'm such a terrible person. I'm such this, I'm such that, blah, 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 blah. Next thing you know, you're depressed, you're anxious, you're all of these things because you do not know how to deal with your big emotions or you don't know how to deal with this internal dialogue. So one of the things that I have learned in the last, I don't know, five or 10 years is how to how to be okay with myself, how to have conversations with myself, how to recognize what's truth, what's not truth, what's a story, what's a limiting belief, how how I want to feel. These are all things that I'm able to recognize, not only in my personal life, but in my business life, in my family, in my money. I'm able to bring this awareness to everything that I do, You know, whether it's a root canal, whether it's taking my kid to daycare, whether it's podcasting, whether it's whatever the situation is we have this internal dialogue and being able to determine what's truth versus what's a story has been huge for me. You know, a lot of times we project our fears and insecurities onto other people when in fact that is not reality. That's our 
perception of reality. That's our brain and our ego, their perception, its perception of reality. And that's not true. Like those, a lot of times what your ego thinks, acts, feels is not true. I'm hoping this makes sense. And so when you can start to take a deep dive into into yourself, into your limiting beliefs, into your habits, into how you interact with others and really just take it for what it is. Like you can, the, the possibilities are endless. The possibilities are seriously endless. And the, the, the amount of emotional freedom that you will experience when you're just able to be like, meh, no big deal. Like I, I can't control that. No big deal. Instead of wasting a whole lot of time and a whole lot of energy on something that you really have no control over, okay? This has been a game changer for me. And I'm telling you guys, a handful of years ago, I would have handled this situation entirely differently, so much differently. I would have waited until I was like on the verge of death before I would have called the dentist. And I'm not kidding you. Like I would have waited till my face was like the size of a softball or till I was the point where I wanted to like shoot myself because I was in so much pain before I would go freaking call the dentist. So for me to be able to reach out for help within three days, two days really is huge, huge. It is huge. And I do this all the time. Like now I'm like, nope, if I have a problem, I'll, I'll give myself some time to try and figure it out myself. And if I can't, I'm not going to beat a dead horse. I'm not going to beat my head against the wall. I'm not going to just, I'm not going to struggle, struggle, struggle because I've been conditioned that life has to be hard and that we have to struggle. And that's total bullshit. That's a story. Life doesn't have to be hard. You are choosing to make it hard, or you can choose to ask for help. You just have to check your ego in order to ask for help. You don't have to do everything yourself. Yes, you have to do the work. I can't do the work for you. You know, I, I can't do the dentist work myself, but I have to actually show up, right? Like if I didn't show up to that appointment, if I didn't do all of the steps before that appointment, that appointment would have never happened. So there's a lot of action on my part to get to that actual space, actual time and space. So where in your life do you need to start showing up so that others can start to help you? Where is that? What are you working on right now? When I'm talking about this, something is coming up in your head this very second and you're like, oh shit, her root canal is my fill in the blank. So what do you need to do today to start taking action towards what you are resisting? Remember, what you resist will persist and grow bigger. All right. Now go, everybody, get your teeth checked. (laughs) Everybody go schedule your next six-month or next cleaning. Get your your mouth checked. Make sure everything's up to date (laughs) so that you can avoid a root canal if at all possible. Okay? So that's my story. There's a lot of aha moments in there, what you resist will persist and grow bigger. All right, guys, have a kick-ass day. Catch you on the flip side.